So I'm here with uh, fellow vice captain Joey Gray. We're going to take a look at uh, the captain's face off. Two captains, one table, inside the bubble, but socially distanced just in case this is face off. Jeremy, you're, you're taking over from Johan. Are you ready to step into his shoes? Uh, well, ready to step into my own shoes. I uh, don't really try to follow too many people's lead like that. Um, but yeah, I'm ready as hell, for sure. Yeah, Jeremy's answer was pretty pretty typical Jeremy. You know, he doesn't like living in other people's shoes, you know. So he's not, he's not got any of uh, Johan's traits? Uh, you know, I don't really know Johan that well, but um, Jeremy's definitely, I know he's, He's definitely a different type of instructor. Definitely, you know, he's more of a player type coach. You know what I mean? He, he understands what these guys have been through in order to get to where they're at. Yeah, that's funny you should say that. That's what I'm looking forward to because Alex is obviously a great player back in the day and, you know, he's won a lot of big tournaments and he's got a lot of knowledge. So obviously the two captains being like former players and still play a little bit. As well, obviously, Johan wasn't a player at all, so I'm intrigued to see uh, the tactics this year and team sheets more than anything. Yeah, I think that's interesting having both captains because I mean, I played, you know, all my life. I mean, I played for about 20 years. Oh, you play pool? Yeah, yeah, oh, a little yeah. bit. <laughs> but I, I was, you know, I was really interested to see how both. I captains thought you was the fitness guru. Hey, I am now. I teach and I work out. Oh, okay. That's all I do. <laughs> One of the things we have every year at the Moscone Cup is debate online about the selections. This year, one name keeps coming back up, Tyler Steyer. Alex, do you feel that Jerry might have picked the wrong team by leaving Tyler out? Well, it's a, you know, it's a tall order to bring someone new in. The good thing for USA is that there aren't any fans. So that'll take some heat away from Chris Robinson. Uh, Tyler did well, especially the first year. He turned it around on day one, but uh, you know, Chris Robinson is new in there. He isn't used to the international stage. So it's all up to us, to my guys, to, to play well and put pressure and punish every mistake. What happened there, pal? Why no Tyler? <laughs> oh, boy. No, I've got a question for you, actually. Serious question. Obviously, we're vice captains, right? Yeah. If you was the captain, would you have picked Chris or would you have gone with Tyler? I mean, based on the training and everything, I mean, me and Jeremy both really, we, I mean, at first I kind of butted heads. I, I didn't, I didn't really think that Chris was going to be making the cut. Did but you just think the same team initially? In my mind, yeah, but yeah. you know, when Jeremy first uh, asked me to be vice captain, I was really excited because I thought that I could make a difference in making a change to the team because I, I knew all these guys and I knew that there was something missing as far as the team dynamic and I didn't know what it was. But I was really excited to find out. And I think that working with Jeremy and being able to kind of cipher through all this stuff, Chris was really the clear-cut decision. I mean, at the end of the day, I got to know him really well and saw his potential. And what I like about Chris is he takes things extremely literal. I mean, if you tell him to shoot a shot a certain way, he is going to do it exactly the way you say it. Mm -hmm. And so it's, I mean, that means a lot as a, as a coach and as a, as a player, somebody you're working with. And I felt like, you know, working with Tyler a little bit, you know, he's definitely got, he, he's got a little bit more prestige and I feel like he's past that, you know, learning stage. I mean, mm -hmm. I know he's constantly learning, but I mean, I feel like it was easier to coach Chris than it was Tyler. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, I've never seen him play, so I can't be too uh, harsh on the kid. Yeah. Plus, I like to see a rookie anyway, so. Yeah, for sure. Jeremy, any chance you think you might regret not having Tyler with you this week? His job's on the line, pal. I know what the game's about. Uh, just like Alex, I've played in uh, several of these. I've been involved in many others uh, as a spectator and assistant captain. I don't have any regrets. When come come Friday, I won't have any regrets. So that's one thing I like about Jeremy too is when he makes a decision, he sticks with it. There's mm -hmm. no jumping around. You know what I mean? Like we made we decided that Corey was going to be the alternate, and there was no like man. I mean maybe you know what I mean? None of that. It was just we made that decision and we were sticking with it. So Tyler didn't stand the chance, no matter what. What what pecking order was he like? If like four guys got COVID, was he in? <laughs> <laughs> was he ever making I the team? I mean, you know, we were gonna talk about it when the situation arose. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> we were gonna let it let it come up, but I mean, obviously. Was, was you in before discussion. Tyler, or? I mean, you know, uh, <laughs> I was hitting some balls. <laughs> 
Alex, one of the things this year we've spoken about a lot in the build-up is what Europe did wrong in the last two years and areas to improve. Because of that, does it make it more that Europe lost the last two Moscone Cups rather than perhaps USA won them? Well, it's not for me. I'm not in the role of a commentator. I'm the captain and I'm assisted by Carl and we're just looking to go ahead, take it from here and uh, build from here actually. So. So we, we didn't analyze, overanalyze what happened in the two years that Europe lost. We, you know, we're just looking to be prepared and uh, give them hell. What was your real opinion on why Europe lost the last couple of years? Because it was 7v5 <laughs> for the last two years. Yeah. yeah. We had five guys, you had seven. <laughs> now yeah, it, now it's clear. Now, clear cut it, now it's 7v7. <laughs> no, I mean, to be fair, we've, we've I mean, I'm going to say we've been lucky, but it, it, because of COVID, we could pick, you know, obviously four wild cards. So with the system we have, somebody might sneak through the door and be a rookie who has not done anything on like a TV arena stage. So, I mean, like Kazakis, you know, I've been like busting his balls a little bit, but, you know, he, he's obviously a world class player, but he just struggled on the TV events and. You know, it was a shame to see, but, you know, I don't think Fedor's going to have that issue. You know, he's won the World Nine Ball Championship, so, yeah. you know, if you win a title like that, you, sh you should be okay. Well, I was kind of wondering with uh, with Alex, I mean, if he, uh, if this would make him more hungry for the next few years to really prove himself to get on the team. And Yeah, and, I mean, uh, he has a lot of high finishes everywhere he goes. In America, you know, in Europe, he's, like, always up there, but just just not quite done it yet and I think once he does it you know he's, he's going to go on to uh, he'll, he'll definitely get back in the team at, at some point. What about Kachi? Probably don't want me to be captain. Like, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about Kachi though? I was just curious about that. I mean you know he had a couple of he had a bad year but then he had a pretty good year. I mean I'm really curious to see how he if he's grown I mean to be able to perform again. Yeah I think I think the only thing that's let Kachi down the last um, couple of years is just the doubles but I didn't like the way Marcus threw him out there with Kazakis, you know, straight away, you know, playing doubles with a guy that's not played in the Moscow, and I thought it was a bit of a silly move. Mm. And I think you should be playing with guys who have got more experience. So the thing is, with you know, at the end of the day, we can pick the team and, you know, we can do everything right, but we're not holding the queue at the end of the day. So yeah. you know, All we can do is control care. the format, right? Yeah, and blame the captain. If it's yeah, possible. exactly. <laughs> Double J's fault. <laughs> of course, in any sport, you need respect and in the build to the Moscone Cup sometimes we do amplify the trash talk but respect is important. Alex, do you think your team, the five guys, have enough respect for the five Americans? Hmm. See, I've missed something here with the respect. I don't know what's going on. I, I fell mean, asleep really? and then like, <laughs> I've just heard loads of stories. What, what's going on? You said something in um, the loose pool. Uh, well, I did. Well, we did an uh, interview. Me and Nick did an interview yesterday. And, uh, you know, I just, I saw a few things about trash talk that kind of, uh, fill me in, pal. What's chapped me up a little bit, you What's know, well, I just saw some things like, you know, I, I knew that coming into this, there was going to be some trash talk and some people were going to be getting pretty heated or whatever, but you know, all in fun and in, in a competitive way, you know, uh, but when people start touching on personal subjects, that's, uh, that's a whole nother story. And whenever, uh, whenever that stuff starts happening, then people get their feathers ruffled and, uh, who said what, Bad Paul? Thing. Come on. Tell hey, us. my name's Paul. That's between y'all. You know what I mean? But uh, we'll, uh, you know, think about just being grateful that we have enemies to make us play better. You know what I mean? Yeah, so. it's all fun and games. At the end. I can't worry about them too much. I got a lot on my plate with our guys. Uh, I'm a little worried about the shots after the break and how that goes down. That's a lot of nine ball at this level. Um, not too worried about Chris. He's a rookie. Uh, I actually think quite opposite of what Alex said earlier. I think the fans are an advantage for us. Are you worried about Chris, pal? Well, I mean, I'm worried about everybody. I hope they all play perfect. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm not worried about Chris. We've been working with him a lot. Him and Jeremy have got a really, really close bond when it comes to the training. And I think Jeremy's got him on a really, really good trending path to play his best pool. And I mean, I've seen I mean, a lot of these guys, like, you know, Billy Thorpe, when he was 20, I couldn't believe he made the Moscone Cup. I mean, actually, I was kind of pissed off about it whenever I was a kid. You know? Why? <laughs> well, I was like, damn, this kid hasn't really won anything, and he's 20 years old. How did he get on here? You know what I mean? And but now you're picking now, Chris. I mean, well, that's what I'm saying is, like, you know, you pick, you know, that's how Tyler got picked. I mean, everybody's going to have that feeling, you know, and that's whenever I was younger. But I've kind of seen how 
the Moscone can elevate these players to a whole another degree and a whole another level. Mm -hmm. And uh, I feel like Chris, I mean, you know, whether he performs perfectly or not, I think that it's going to elevate his game tremendously and look for him in the future, if not now, to be one of the best players around. <clears throat> Looks a bit worried to me, though. <laughs> and, you know, if you talk pressure or performing in an arena, I might go out. Guys know how to do it. They've done it. That's why they're here. So I don't, uh, you know, with or without an audience, with or without distractions, it's still about the one shot you have in front of you. Are you not worried about the doubles play? No. I mean, everybody's struggled, it seemed like, in the past. Especially not being able to speak the same language. I mean, no, I mean, that's a hard situation. Obviously, I've played in it four times and won four, and I've got a great doubles record. I've won the World Cup of Pool, so I understand what doubles play is about. And, you know, there's no need to be talking and all this crap at the table. Just kind of, you know, in my opinion, someone, someone should take the lead, and, and the other guy should just kind of sit back. There's not enough time to, to be talking and, and all that crap, to be fair. So I'm not worried. I just hope everyone brings their A game and plays well. And like Jeremy said, you need you need a little bit of luck at the right time. But you know the, the respect's there. At the end of the day, you guys are two-time defending champions. So in my eyes, we we are the underdogs. There's no doubt about it. Got a bunch of young guys. Of course, our leader Shane, who uh, who is always hungry, doesn't like getting beat, no matter the format, no matter the stage. I watch him play amateur players, and it takes a lot for him to let them shoot. So uh, it, it does not matter. What do you think to Shane in the Moscone over the years? What do I think to Shane? Yeah. Um, like about Shane? What do you no, mean? No, like the way he's played in the Moscone over the years. Oh, well, you know, obviously in the past, um, we, we talked about it a little bit in loose pool, and I felt like, and I heard Emily say it a few times, that really it just seemed like there was too many leaders on the team, and Shane couldn't really assert himself as the leader, and, and they wouldn't really accept it, it seems like, you know, but, you know, Shane being, like, the leader, and like Emily said, she did say, like, the dad of the team, kind of, you know, and, um, but Shane's really taken that role, and, and I feel like, I mean, I sent him a paragraph from a book that I read about Michael Jordan, and, you know, it's not about making yourself great, it's about making the players around you great, and mm -hmm. so you can take a trash team and make them play their absolute best, in a race to five, I mean, that's, that's all that matters. Jeremy, Alex, thank you both very much for your time, for joining us around this table for face-off. Damn, no fist fight? <laughs> Alex is MMA fighter. I know. I, well, I thought J Jerry will throw down. <laughs> <laughs> MMA, Alex. Hey, it doesn't matter when you throw a chair. <laughs> <laughs> so that's it, the face-off. Joey, right. thanks for joining me. All right, good Respect. luck. Respect. Good luck.